Welcome to my channel, Living Your Best Life, and I'm Cindy Smaha. We're in a series now called Barriers, and our topic for today is, what is your body saying? And before we get into our topic, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell right next to it so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. And if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. So our topic is, what is your body saying? I have some other questions for you. Are you listening? Do you want to listen? Do you want to know the answer? And then, of course, do you want to do something about it? Okay, what is your body saying? You know, our bodies say lots of things. I'm tired, I want to go to bed, I'm wore out, I'm hungry, I have to go to the bathroom. But there's other things that our body says that can be more subtle. And if you're like me, I grew up, you know, with the, you're fine, back in that uh, era, it's fine, you're good, suck it up, keep going. And I learned to ignore those signals. I learned to ignore what my body was telling me, you know. And so when I got into my 20s, I couldn't ignore those symptoms and those signs any longer. And if you're like me, we sort of like go through the world in zombie mode, isn't it? And so we, we learn to just adapt and to ignore our own thoughts and feelings because those are secondary to the world, right? You know, there's people and kids and work and projects and catastrophes and crises and all that kind of stuff that just clamor for our attention. And so it's hard, and I know it is, it's hard to pay attention when your body is talking. Sometimes your body needs to shout at you, unfortunately. There's also the mindset, and I have this too, that if I listen, it's gonna be really bad. If I pay attention to what my body's saying, am I gonna like what it's telling me? Well, like it or not, your body's gonna talk to you, and it's gonna say what it's gonna say even whether you want to listen to it or not. Again, I grew up in an era where we didn't pay attention to what our body was telling us. And when I, again, when I got into my 20s and about 25, I learned that I have hypolipidemia, which is genetically high cholesterol. I didn't even know our family had genetically high cholesterol. I know my mother died at 55, and my grandmother died in her 50s, and my aunt died in her, in her 50s. So everybody on my mother's side, I knew had heart issues, but I didn't know it was high cholesterol. Without medication, my cholesterol is well over 600. And so that was a discovery in my early 20s. And I made a decision then that I didn't want to die in my 50s. I wanted to be healthy. And so I made a decision then to exercise and to eat right and to take my medication for my high cholesterol and to stay thin and that. And you know what? It, w it was good. It was good. And I was able to do things. I did have chest pain during that time. I had chest pain, I would get lightheaded, I would get shortness of breath, not all the times, but at times. And of course I ignored it. I didn't pay attention to it. And, and during that time, and I was running seven miles a day and two hours working out, and I was just a, a you know, an exercise junkie. And I had so much pain in my right hip, I could not walk. I 
could not walk. I went to the doctor and then an orthopedist and who told me um, that I had hip dysplasia. I had no idea I had hip dysplasia. And I'm like, what's hip dysplasia? And he said, if you didn't stop, if you don't stop all your high impact aerobics and get into a job that is a little more sedentary, you will have a hip replacement in your 40s. And of course, I did not want a hip replacement. Oh my goodness, no. Stopped it all, got low impact or no impact exercises, and it was better. And I was able to stave off a hip replacement until I was 49. And I had a, a full hip replacement on the right side. So I staved it off until I was 49. But the chest pain and the shortness of breath was still there at times. And I made a decision then that I better pay attention. I better pay attention a lot more uh, because I didn't know what was going on in here. I had no idea. And the decision was also that I wanted to live. I wanted to enjoy this beautiful life. I want to enjoy the world that God has given me. And I made a decision then to pay attention. And I hope you do too. Make a decision to pay attention. And through it all, I've had to also be an activist, an advocate for myself. I had to push against what the doctors were telling me. And as you can see, I, I look healthy, right? And I'm thin, so the mindset is, you know, you look good, you're healthy, right? Don't judge a book by its cover. And doctors would do the same, you're a woman, it must be anxiety, it's gotta be, you know, maybe it's female stuff, you know? Um, but I kept at it. And what I learned was is that I'm in my body all the time. I don't get a break, okay? I don't get a day off from my body. And now that I hear it and I listen to it, sometimes it shouts a lot. And my, my tolerance for pain has gotten a lot less. Uh, I don't wanna hurt. I don't wanna feel bad. I don't wanna be sick. And so, I've learned and I want to pay attention to me now. I want to. Because one, if I don't pay attention to myself, I can't help other people. But I became an advocate for myself and I kept going to different doctors saying, you know, I have this chest pain. And I've had um, angiograms in the past and they said that, okay, your heart's okay. We do see some um, plaque build up, but it's not bad but I still had chest pain. I still had left-sided numbness, and it was getting worse and worse and worse as I'd gotten older, especially in the past probably five years. Well, last summer, it got to be where I couldn't walk. My right leg hurt so bad that I couldn't walk more than probably 30 feet, 50 feet, and it wasn't getting better. And I decided, okay, this has got to be addressed. I, I can't walk. I can't walk without pain and cramping. And so after various doctors, and finally I pushed to say, I want this, uh, I want this test. And they did the test, and they found out that I had blockages in my abdominal aorta of 90% and down my iliac arteries down in both legs of 90%. And that was causing my peripheral artery disease. And in December, I had a double bypass surgery where I have a, a lovely eight inch scar up my stomach where they went in and they cleaned out my the plaque in my abdominal aorta and my iliac arteries and put in a bypass from the art from the abdominal aorta into the iliac arteries. And I have no pain in my legs anymore. And I am 
so, so grateful to my doctor that he listened to me and he did the surgery. Yes, it was painful. Yes, the recovery was overwhelming and I'm still recovering, but I feel so much better and I'm so, so grateful and I'm so grateful I didn't ignore it. I didn't ignore it. I'm so grateful. It's going to extend my life now that I'm so happy for it. I'll be able to watch my grandchildren grow up and, and hopefully I'll be able to see my great-grandchildren. How wonderful is that? And it just feels so good to feel good. And I hope, I really hope you make that decision to care for yourself. I hope you make that decision to pay attention before it's too late. I have seen so many people over the years not pay attention and their cancer is in stage four. It's in the last stages and there's nothing they can do. They didn't take care of their rheumatoid arthritis and now there's nothing they can do. Please don't wait for the doctor to say there's nothing we can do. Listen to yourself. Go to the doctor. Those answers are there whether you like it or not. Your body's your body and this is the only one you've got. Take care of it. Listen to it. You're worth it and your family's worth it. I hope you hear what I'm saying. That you are important enough and you are loved. That people want to see you for a long, long time. And I know you don't want to leave this planet before you've experienced all these beautiful things. So please, take care of yourself listen to your body. Go to the doctor. It will be worth it. It will be. So I hope this video has helped you in some way, has touched your heart, has helped you, and let you know that you're loved and you're worth it to live a long, long life. So I'm glad that you spent this time with me and I hope you keep coming back because next week we're going to talk about taking out the garbage. Hmm. That'll be interesting. So I'll see you again next week on Monday at 4 o'clock. Have a great week. Bye-bye.